here I am to do another video. Um, can't seem to stop doing videos. Every time I look at news at night, uh, just seeing everything, uh, you know, escalating in front of us, all these end time things. Uh, but this is uh, pictures on the front here is coming from Ramaru in India, and I'm just going to share this. This is a testimony. This is a prayer answered. Uh, he said they had been praying for many, many uh, months and uh, years for a, uh, if you can see up here at the top, uh, a, a, this is Alaveda, and that's an Indian language, so I can't pronounce it very good. Uh, she, he said, Dear respect to sir and madam, greeting in Christ, I went to be in ready Abadur Hospital opening with, a, with the team today. We prayed for the hospital. Thank you so much, sir. We are praying for you all, and you'll feel my cup ministry uh, work. Thank you so much, madam, madam and uh, sir, uh, with respect, Ram. So they have been praying for this hospital, so they're having a hospital opening today. So he went there with his team today. So I'm just going to show a few pictures, and then I'm going to get into a word of counsel that uh, I've been praying about and something I think I need to share with you guys because I'm telling you the enemy is just out to destroy us in any way he can, okay? So I need to talk to you about that. And then also, I'm going to be reading from Mirror Not the Lord is Coming Again. I got another word last night coming from page 290 for, your, for you all who have the book out there. Uh, and it's just talking about uh, God intervenes and in Armageddon. And that's really strange that they talk about Armageddon because we know Armageddon is in our face. Like I have the books out all the time. Why economic collapse and moral decay is America headed for Armageddon? And so uh, I go right to this page where it's talking about Armageddon and some few words of wisdom. Uh, so uh, I will be reading that inspirational uh, message today to you from Ellen G. White again. And uh, we know as we approach in the holidays and the 4th of July and all these things coming, but I will talk about that when I give my word of wisdom. Because, you know, we got to understand, people, the devil hates you. The devil hates me. Uh, the devil would do anything he can to uh, cause us to have stress and distress and uh, attacks and whatever he can do, okay? To get us upset right now, uh, I think I heard another lady the other day was talking about uh, all these things coming, and as the you know these uh, the enemy is pushing forth as for this one world government, we need to stay out of trouble. We need to not get in trouble. We need to really pray before we do anything, people. It just have to come out now. My word of wisdom. Maybe I should talk about it now. We need to pray about anything and everything we do. Okay, everything we do. I don't care if you're taking a walk down the road to go to a friend's house. You need to pray if that's what you sure want you to do for that moment. That's just how devastating it's going to be becoming right now, people. We just can't go in our car and drive across town or drive on a trip or uh, go see uh, uh, relatives or. Uh, go on a 4th of July vacation or uh, whatever it may be. I don't care what it is. I don't care how big it is. I don't care how small it is. We need to get Yeshua's consent. Get his consent, people. You know, yesterday when I went out to get books out, and I'm never giving books out where I'm seen very much. You know, I don't want to draw a crowd to myself. I'm always doing it very individually. And Yeshua would just point those people out to me. I, I got signs in my mind how he who he want me to talk to. Like I said, when the lady coming around in the grocery store, and I say, hello, madam, how's she doing? She's very friendly with me. And then I go around the corner again. I'm going all through the grocery store again, and I run right into that woman again. I already know that's my sign. That's my sign. So, you know, we need to be understanding to listen to the small, still voice and listening to Yeshua's counsel. And learn to walk with him where you know his voice. Okay, that's really the problem. A lot of people haven't, a lot of people haven't even begun to know how to walk with Yeshua, how to listen to his voice. And so all of these things are important right now because the enemy is out to sift you, man. He's out to sift you like wheat. He's out to destroy you as if he can. He's out to destroy your reputation. He's out to do whatever he can. You know, so we need to be getting Yeshua's consent. That's my counsel for today, okay? So um, I'm going to go ahead and show the pictures, and then I'll get to I'm or not the Lord is coming, and I'm going to let you go. I'm not going to keep a long video today, but I'm telling you, we need to be really, really seeking our Savior right now. 
We're going to have so many things going on, so much uh, persecutions and judgments on the lands and uh, family members who we think love us, don't love us. Uh, they can put us in a mess. Uh, we need to be just understanding, you know, that the devil is out to get us. The devil is out to attack us. The devil is out to destroy us. Okay. So we need to get the counsel from our father. Know what the father would have us to do right now. I know Ramaru, when he go to these places here, he's praying. He's praying all the time before he even decide to go. If you got to take a mission trip, you need to pray way weeks before you even go. Okay. Because you don't know, you can run into a, a, a running yourself into deep trouble, running yourself into deep trouble. If you want to go before Yeshua, go before him, people. He need to go before you. You don't need to go before him. Do you get that? Okay. He need to be the one setting the trip up, setting whatever up for you, where he can have his holy angels to guard you, protect you. And I can tell you guys, uh, assign angels to go with you wherever you go. Okay. Night or day, it doesn't matter. Stop taking things for granted. Stop taking things for granted, okay? That's how people get into all these snares of the devil because they take things for granted. They take things for granted. So let me go here and go here and show the pictures here. Wow, that's that's a word coming from Yeshua, not just from me, people. The Holy Spirit, okay, warning, a warning message that you need to really seek the Savior before you do anything, anything, okay? Now it says here, uh, this is Ramaru's car. <laughs> I love this little car. He's at the hospital. Uh, so I'm going to go see what they're doing inside the hospital. Um, <clears throat> he just brought some people in there. They're all sitting around uh, talking, I guess talking and meeting each other. Assuming this guy is somebody special. He's meeting him, shaking his hand. Um, they got a video camera here, so he's going to be taking pictures, it seems like. Uh, so he's now the guy's taking pictures a little bit here. Okay. Ramaru smiling right here. This is Ramaru. <laughs> so, uh, just, uh, really, uh, in the hospital with the Bibles, I see Bibles here. Uh, so I, I, I don't know if they was invited to bless the hospital, to pray over the hospital. Uh, he didn't say very much in the, in the letter. So I don't really know. So I'm just going to go by the pictures I'm seeing here. Um, him and some other pastors here with him. Um, so I know they've been praying for a hospital because they've been needing a little hospital. So, uh, that is like a real testimony prayer been answered. Uh, they rest in their feet here. All on rest in their feet, got the shoes off. Um, wow. Okay. Well, I guess they just went there to visit the hospital, the opening of the hospital. I see equipment here. I don't know what this is. All kind of things here. Might be medicines. It might be herbs. I, I don't know what they are, but I'm glad he shared these pictures with us about the new hospital they have uh, that they want to open in India. So that's a wonderful little testimony. So I'm going to go here now and um, go, jump over here to something been on my mind from last night. Uh, last night, this was on my mind. I'm going to show you a few uh, news articles here and I will put more of them down. I will put more of them down in the description box. But I want to talk about this real quick. I'm going to come back to uh, Britain. I'm going to come back to Britain's Prince William thing here. But I'm going to go here and talk about this right now. I sent it out to a few of you guys last night. Uh, so I hope you guys got to look at that. But for you who did not get to look at this article, I'm like, wow. I saw this article and I'm like, wow, that is really amazing to me. Uh, now I don't want to open up. I hope it opens up. Open up. It's just a regular email. Why don't you want to open up here? I don't understand this thing sometimes. Let me get rid of Ramaru pictures or maybe to open up better. Oh, wow. I don't understand that. I don't know. understand that at all. Huh. Well, I know the bandwidth over here is not good on the weekends, not good on Friday. So I don't know. It's after three o'clock, so it's really not good. I usually do my videos a little earlier, but I really want to show you guys that article where uh, this lady was, uh, they was getting on this lady for not, uh, <clears throat> for not, um, oh boy, that's, that's just too bad. I can't get that to open. That's crazy to me. 
Father, I ask that you let this video work for me right now as I do these videos. I don't know what's going on. I don't. Um, well, anyway, people, I sent this message out last night to a lot of you, but I really want to talk about it. I want to show the article and talk about it. And just the devil just like to get in the way. And I, I rebuke you right now, Satan, to get off my videos and let this work today. Um, uh, this about the Supreme Court unanimously upholds a woman's right to pray in her home. And they say that, uh, they voted unanimously to uphold a woman's right to pray in her home. And, you know, I start thinking about that, people. I say, you know, that's back in the time when, uh, that's back in the time when, uh, in the Bible, you know, it talked about Daniel. Remember when Daniel was praying three times a day? Daniel was praying three times a day and, and the king came and made a, a decree that they can't pray. And I'm like looking at this article last night. I'm like, wow, look at there, look at there, look at there. You know, I, I just think that's horrible people. I, I mean, you know, it's already in our face that they're going to do this stuff, that they want to do this stuff, you know, uh, cause a decree to go forth. So I'm saying if that's already in the news, they're probably going to be causing it to come forth here any day now for all of us, especially when they have the Sunday blue law, uh, uh, come out with the Sunday blue law where you have to keep Sabbath on Sunday. And I just thought that was amazing article, but I can't get it to open. I don't know why it's just not, uh, uh I don't understand that at all. Very frustrating when I'm trying to do videos and that happen. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and read from here. Not the Lord is coming. And I had another article here. I want to read, uh, coming from, uh, Prince William. Uh, if I, I, I doubt if I can even get that one open, but I was trying to see if I can get it to open, but I will post it down below, uh, because they are saying now, and Prince William, um, right here, they saying here that, uh, Britain's Prince William hit Britain's Prince William is a hit with the Israelis and the Palestinians. Oh my goodness. So you guys can see what's coming. What's ahead. What's coming. Okay. So my computer just don't want to work today. I don't know what it is. I have no idea. I'm just doing a simple video here. This is like an email here. I don't understand it at all. But I know that the devil is just meaner than crap, and he don't want nothing to get out. He don't want people to pray. He don't want people to do anything. I mean, imagine that woman praying in her own household. Couldn't They was on her about that. On her about that, people. So here it is, finally open. So this is the one here. Supreme Court unanimously upholds a woman's right to pray in her home. And it says here, uh, in a stunning reversal of a lower court decision Thursday, the United States Supreme Court sided with religious liberty, ruling unanimously that a Kansas woman does indeed have the right to pray in her own home. And, you know, I'm thinking, wow, how, how did this ever get before the Supreme Court? And I'm like, and then the Lord told me, remember Daniel? Remember Daniel? They was after him about praying three times a day. And I say, oh, my goodness, here it is right in our face. It's going to be coming. People, if it's in the news already, you already know it's going to be coming out at us later. It really will be coming out at us later. So, uh, wow. I just want to show that to you, but they, uh, and they said it was like, a. what happened here was a devout Catholic, this lady who was praying her, playing her radio in her home. When according to the, her attorneys, the police was called to investigate a minor noise complaint. And Saucy said the cops harassed her and threatened to take her to jail when she asked why she would be arrested. And so uh, this is what this is what can go on with these cops. You know, I really don't want to have much to do with police these days. I mean, for any little minor trivia thing, you know, you, you just don't want to deal with them very much because we don't have the same kind of cops we used to have years ago when I was growing up. Uh, but you know, we, we really need to watch ourselves. People I already told you it's so important to watch what we do now because any little thing can come before us. And I, I just thought that was amazing. It was crazy when I saw this old article here, but, uh, let's go here and see that I get Prince William to pull up this article. Um, I don't know. I, I, one of these days I get a better computer, a, a bandwidth, uh, maybe some more expensive bandwidth or something. See, I can't get it to come up. I'm going to let it just sit there. But Prince William uh, is being very popular now in the Middle East. And uh, 
And so we already know what's coming, people. I told you guys what's coming. Uh, they're going to have all these things going on. And people said, well, one, uh, some of the comments I was reading on that article, and the lady said, well, I thought he was a Protestant. How can he be putting a, a teapot on his head and praying and touching the, uh, the, the wailing wall? And you know why? Because they want everybody to come and follow after the beast, okay? Where's my beast? Everybody, you know, the dragon, people. The dragon is before us. They want everybody to be worshiping the beast and taking uh, worshiping the dragon. And they're making a mock to the image of the beast and taking a chip and a mock. What do you think? They're going to have to be buddies and friends. You ever seen people like that in your own life? Uh, they can be a buddy and a friend. And then all of a sudden, uh, they, you, you found out they were using you, using you. But that's what's going on, people. That's what's going on. But I am so glad that, uh, uh, you know, like right now, America, America is in, in trouble. We're in so much trouble. And, and, and Israel is in trouble because we have decided to, we don't, need a, we don't need a savior. We don't need Yeshua. We don't need the Bible. We don't need nothing. We just need what we want to do. We want to do what we want to do. We don't need nobody telling us what to do. We have went against Yeshua principles, went against his commandments. And so I'm telling you, that's what's going on. And so Yeshua said he's going to send foreigners in a land that you know not. He's going to, you know, a lot of things going to be going on, people. I just want you to know. So I want to go here and read Maranatha and let her tell you what's happening. And where are we approaching? Uh, we're going up to Amagat, okay? As World War Three is about to bust out before us, war with Iran, war with Russia, uh, <clears throat> It's just going to be so much happening. And I try to tell you much information as I can because I don't know how soon it's going to be where I'm not here to talk. I don't know what can happen to me. I don't know what can happen to you. I don't know what can happen to the Internet. I don't know. I just know we're going to have a lot of great tests coming before us. And we need to be preparing ourselves because it's absolutely coming, people. It's absolutely coming, okay? So she says here, God intervenes in Armageddon. God intervenes in Armageddon. Father, let your Holy Spirit come be with me as I read your, this message to the people in Yeshua's name. Amen and amen. It says, A noise shall come even to the ends of the earth, for the Lord has a controversy with the nations. He will plead with all flesh. He will give them that are wicked to the sword, saith the Lord. Jeremiah 25, 31. For 6,000 years, the great controversy has been in process, progress. And that's where this book come from, The Great Controversy. I, re I really love this book so much uh, by Ellen G. White, The Great Controversy, okay? And if you ever get a hold of The Great Controversy at uh, 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 Amazon or wherever, you, you can try to get a copy and read it. It's really worth the reading, okay? So it says here, uh, for 6,000 years, The Great Controversy has been in progress. The Son of God and His heavenly messengers have been in conflict with the power of the evil one to warn, enlighten, and save the children of men. Now all have made their decisions. The wicked have fully united with Satan in his warfare against God. The time has come for God to vindicate the authority of his downtrodden law. Now the controversy is not alone with Satan, but with men. The Lord has a controversy with the nations. He will give them that are wicked to the sword. Hallelujah. I can't wait for that time to come. Aren't you just tired of the wicked? I'm tired of the wicked. I am. I'm tired of them taking over. I'm tired of them trying to distress and, 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 and depress us and take away from us and kill us. I'm tired of the wicked. The mark of deliverance has been set upon those that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done. Now the angel of death goes forth represented in Ezekiel's vision by the men with the slaughtering weapons to whom the command is given. Slay utterly, old and young, both maids and little children and women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark. Do you understand the mark? And begin at my sanctuary, says the prophet. They begin at the ancient men which were before the house, Ezekiel 9, 1 to 6. And I'm going to stop there a minute. You hear they say the mark. And that's why I say we're going to have the mark of the beast. Uh, we're going to have uh, 
this opportunity where we're going to decide who we're going to follow. Are we going to serve Yeshua? Are we going to serve the devil and his, uh, his Vatican systems, his Antichrist systems? Uh, this what they're trying to do right now over in uh, Prince William, all of them getting together, all these antichrists getting together to come against the world, to have a one world leader, people. And so it's right in our face right now. OK, so it's nothing new under the sun. This is way back in Ezekiel time. And he's talking about it again. A lady said the other day to me, well, that happened already. Well, you know, a lot of things going to repeat themselves, people. A lot of history is repeating itself, if you didn't know that. Okay. So this is uh, uh, saying here now, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark and begin at my sanctuary, says the prophet. They began at the ancient men, which were before the house, Ezekiel 9, 1 to 6. The work of destruction begins among those who have professed to be the spiritual guardians of the people. The false watchmen are the first to fall. There are none to pity or to spare. Men, women, maidens, and little children perish together. You hear that? Perish together. And I feel so bad for the children. But you know, the children, I have a, a, a better, uh, the children, I have a, more, a, a better way to get in the kingdom than some of you out there who just refuse to follow Yeshua at all. You know, uh, uh, grownups who don't want to follow Yeshua. They want to follow uh, their clubs and their uh, uh, memberships of, different churches and, uh, uh, you know, want to play, uh, play church as I want to call it, but they don't want to follow Yeshua. They don't want to have a, they don't know how to listen to his voice. They don't know how to hear him. They just want to play church people. And that's why Yeshua say, come out and be separate and dwell not with the unclean thing. Dwell not with these Vatican systems. That's what they are. Mother of harlots. Okay. Uh, so, um, let's go on down and finish this here up. The Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. Isaiah 26, 21. In the mad strife of the in the mad strife of their own fierce passions, and by the awful outpouring of God's unmingled wrath, fall the wicked inhabitants of the earth, priests and rulers and people, rich and poor, high and low. And the slain of the Lord shall be at that day from one end of the earth, even unto the other end of the earth. They shall not be lame in it, neither gathered, nor buried. Jeremiah 25, 33. So that's the end of that chapter, uh, that page there. Uh, God intervenes on Armageddon because I'm telling you, Armageddon is coming. Uh, we don't know all the troubles we're going to have, but it's right around the corner, people. Wow, right around the corner. You see, war is right around the corner. War for America. War. War, bloodshed, okay? And many deaths, many people dying. We got all the signs showing. All the volcanoes are sprewing. All the earthquakes are ready to go off. All the volcanoes under the sea are ready to go off into the uh, west, into the east, to cause tsunamis. We're going to have the biggest quake we ever seen before Yeshua come. People, I'm telling you, it's time. It's time to give your life to Yeshua HaMashiach. It's time to give your life to him, people. Wow, war. War is really coming. War is on the way. War is coming, people. War like we never seen before. Never seen before is on the way. Uh, we're gonna be having all kind of things happen, people. All kind of things happen. I don't know if these people can come out our doorways, come at our door. I dreamed the dream years ago that these same kind of men was at our door knocking, coming in our houses, ordering us out. Uh, taking the, uh, the liquids, they took the liquids in my kitchen and pulled all the water out, all the, uh, anything liquid, juice, uh, 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 grape juice, whatever, apple juice, whatever, orange juice. They pulled all the liquids out, pulled the water out. And then they, uh, took a lot of the canned goods out of the homes. They took a lot of the food out of the homes and they told us if we want to eat, we have to follow them and go down to the FEMA camps. I had that dream uh, about three different times I've had that dream, okay? And then they came in with weapons and guns and they ordered you out. And if you didn't go with them, they shot you on the spot. They shot you on the spot. So I know these times are coming before us, people. I'm not trying to put fear in you, but I have to tell it like it is, okay? We need to be a warrior, though. We need to be warriors for Yeshua, warriors for my father, warriors 
warriors for him, people, by spreading the gospel and doing what we can while we can right now for Yeshua. This is what we need to be doing, being a warrior for him, people, not running away from him, okay, but being a warrior for him. But I know he told me in another dream that he would be the he would be the uh, uh he would be the captain. He would be the captain. He would fight for Israel. He told me in a dream he would fight for Israel. Yeshua Hamashiach gonna fight for his people, his remnant people. So we need to be giving our life to him, okay? It's I would be sad to be left outside the doorway, left outside without a king, without my Yeshua. I mean my king Yeshua, not my king, uh, these other people. But I would have I would be sad to be left outside looking in without my uh my father, my master, my savior, my everything. As he's saying here, I want you, I want you, I want you. He want us. He want us to join his army, people. Join his army today. We need to be giving our life to him today. Uh, go into Romans 10, 9 and 10 and say, Father, here I am. Take me, Lord. I'm a sinner. Uh, forgive me for all my sin, Yeshua. Clean me up inside, Father. Oh, change my DNA from Adam's seed to your seed, Father. Just help me, Lord. Help me, Father. Help me. Uh, I was born in iniquity and shaped in iniquity by my mother in my mother's womb. I came in the world as a sinner and I have to be changed because of Adam's sin, Father. So I know that you are the great Elohim. Just change me now today. Change me, Father, today. And that's all you need to say, people, a simple prayer. Give your life to Yeshua, okay, today, because it's coming. It's going to be too late, too late, too late, too late, too late. It'll be too late. And so, um, I know Sabbath is on the way, and uh, and so I just wanted to come and do this video anyway, because Sabbath is on the way. And like I tell you people all the time that Yeshua uh, never changed the Sabbath. He never changed it from Sabbath. Uh, he never changed it to Sunday. It always was the seventh day. Uh, so, uh, you know, he says to remember the seventh day to keep it holy. Six days shall thy labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord, thy God, Exodus 28 to 10. So I'm telling you, we need to be giving our life to him because the Sabbath is a delight. And I love this one here where he says here on about the Sabbath, uh, he says here about the Sabbath. Um, now let me see if I can get that down. It says, bless it, bless it, the Sabbath day and set it apart as special because on that day he rested from all the work he had created so that itself could produce. And that got to be another version somewhere. Shabbat Shalom. So I'm going to just tell you guys that uh, time is running out. Time is running out. I need some special prayers today uh, for somebody. And I'm going to mention that in a minute here. But we need to be really just uh, being close to the Father right now, people. Praying for your households, keeping the angels over your households, uh, keeping the blood do the blood over your doorposts because, you know, we're going to be having all kind of troubles. All kind of troubles going to be coming on the lands. Uh, you shall sanctify yourselves and be holy for I am holy is another uh, good uh, Bible verse coming from Leviticus 11.44 and uh, now another Shabbat Shalom. So I, I just love it so much. And... Um, my friend here, uh, Leonard, he's over in uh, Victoria, okay, and he's getting ready to leave Sunday, and uh, I was hoping to have some uh, funds coming in to help him uh, and the three pastors that he's uh, administrating, uh, that he's working with over in Victoria, and uh, sad to say, no funds have came in yet. So people, if you can offer anything to help him uh, uh, with missions over there, uh, he have uh, almost had a hundred souls in the last few days. A hundred souls won the cry. A hundred souls won the Christ. I'm sorry, and uh, and I'm just hoping that um, that he can continue doing this missionary work. I'm gonna try to get him to work with Bob Barber as well. But uh, we, this young man is really dynamic uh, about souls, and he's been doing a wonderful job. So. If you guys can support him in any way possible, I would love to have uh, uh, offerings come in. Um, the rest of this month, we're going to be mostly supporting uh, Leonard and, uh, and, and Ramaru and, 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 and uh, Ram over in India. I can't talk here. And so we uh, all the missions uh, money's coming in will be going out to these two gentlemen that do a lot of work in the vineyard uh, to win souls for Yeshua. Okay. So... Uh, 
just wanted to uh, put that out to you to be praying for Leonard over there. Uh, a lot of things going on. He was just saying how the people are just flocking. The people just flocking to him uh, for uh, salvation. They want to have a savior. They've been baptized. They want, they, they, they just, it's amazing. He said, just amazing to him. I got a short email this morning, how all the people just really uh, want to give their life to Yeshua because trouble is all around and they know that Yeshua is coming soon. So, uh, and also I'm just going to throw out a name out there for you to pray. I was going to put it on my email addresses today. I haven't had time and I'm not going to use, but one name, Miss Davis, her name, last name, uh, just put some prayers up for her that Yeshua would give her favor. And I'm just going to leave it like that. Give her favor in a situation that she's in. Uh, so, uh, please be praying for her in your prayers, uh, tonight or tomorrow, be lifting her up. And we have a lot of people in the prayer box that I pray over, but I'm going to say another prayer before I close. But uh, just remember these people in your prayers, okay? These missionaries and uh, uh, this woman, Miss Davis, in your prayers, okay? And so uh, then I'm going to be um, just also closing out here. I like this picture. Where's that picture I like so much? I don't know where I put it. Um, my, my Yeshua here, my Yeshua, another picture of Yeshua. So I'm just going to put this out and we're going to have a word of prayer right now and close out. But I, I really know that uh, as the, the word I just gave you guys, uh, I want you guys to really take that word of cautious, caution that I just gave you. Please don't do nothing without Yeshua's consent. I'm telling you nothing. And as simple as it may seem to be. If you're going to the grocery store shopping, Father, cover me. I'm going to the grocery store and shopping. Uh, put angels around me, Father. Protect me. Get me back home. Uh, you know, you don't know where you can go and not come back. So you need to just really trust him right now in these evil days, evil days, okay? So um, I was hoping that those pictures would have, uh, I was hoping that that picture would have came up with Prince William. Let me go see if I could get that real quick, if I can get that up before I leave. Uh, wow. I just know that, man, it, they, they are really fixing things, gathering things over in the Middle, in the middle East. Uh, you know, they really are gathering things. So, and uh, I'm telling you, it's just going to get really, really bad, really, really bad people. And, it, and it's going to seem like a short time of, of peace. It's going to seem like a short time of peace, you know. But you know, I already know what Yeshua have said about that. He already told you guys it won't be any peace. Here it is. Thank you, Father. Let that for coming up. Now, look at this, people. Britain's Prince William are hit with the Israelis and the Palestinians, okay? And that's what's going on. Look how everybody kind of just is just getting all, all uh, crazy over William, okay? I told you that I really know that he's the Antichrist that's going to be going forth, okay? And I know that people say Obama. Well, Obama's all in it, too. A lot of these Antichrists are working together. Go read First John, okay? I'm going to read it to you again. First John. Let me read it to you real quickly. First John 2. First John 2 chapter. I think it is. Two, yeah, 2 chapter. Second chapter. It says here uh, in First John 2. Uh, well, I thought I had, that's Peter. That's not John. I'm sorry. Uh, 2 uh, 18. <clears throat> and I just read 17. It says, and the world is passing away and the lust of it, and the lust of it. Um, but he who does the will of God abides forever. Then he says here, little children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. Okay, so we know it's the last hour. We are in the last hour. This is the last generation. Okay, people. So let's see what it says here. Prince William, the Duke of Cambridge, spent much of his historical trip as the first British royal to officially visit Israel, meeting with regular Israelis and Palestinians, particularly young people. You know, it's always the young people because this is what, see, Hitler, Hitler failed to do this. And so now it's going to be really absolutely coming through. Okay. Uh, so you guys got to understand what's going on here. The prince watched the Palestinian folk dance and met with Israel's recent Eurovision Song Contest winner, Netta, whoever. I can't say the last name. I'm also, stuck, I'm also struck by how many people in the region 
want a just and lasting peace. Do you hear that? Do you hear that? The prince said, this is only through evidence among the young people I have met who long for a new chapter to be written in the history of this region, a chapter which will secure a prosperous, a prosperous future. I mean, a prosperous future and will ensure that the enormous talent can flourish. These are not extravagant aspirations, but the same aspirations of young people everywhere in the world, everywhere in the world. That should ring a bell with you. They are coming for a one world order, a one world religion, people, a one world system. That's what they want. Okay. Prince William also had a special connection to the Jewish people. His great grandmother, Princess Alice, saved the Jewish family during the Holocaust for her heroism, uh, Yad. Vashem honored her as a righteous Gentile. The prince met two of the family's descendants. Okay. So you can see all what's going on there. You can see what's all going on there, people. The visit also comes at a time when Palestinians are at odds with the United States over President Trump's move of the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem and a perceived bias in favor of Israel. So you guys got to understand what's going on, okay? I'm telling you, it's right in our face. It's right in our face. Look at here. President uh, Rivlin host Prince William. I would like to send him a message of peace and tell him it is about time. It is about time that we have to find together the way to build confidence, to build confidence as a first step to bring the understanding that we have to bring an end the tragedy between us that goes along for more than 120 years, okay? A day later, Prince William met with Palestinian Authority President Ma Mabus Abbas, uh, Abbas, Abbas, I can't say it for me, who said the Palestinians want peace. I hope it won't be the last visit, and we hope that you will visit us very soon when the Palestinian people get their independence. You see these guys here, these are all... Uh, these are all Muslims. And like I say, Arabs and Muslims, all of them, you know. And I'm just saying to you guys that Prince William and the royals are secret Muslims. And I, I know this all going to get together because they all trying to get all the nations together. It, it could be Muslims. It could be Arabs. It could be Hindus. It can be uh, uh, Buddhists. It could be all the people. It don't matter what they are. Small and great, rich and poor, free and bond. That's what Yeshua said. We'll all come after the beast, people. They all will follow the beast, wander after the beast. So we need to know who we're going to serve, people. They already getting this thing together. They getting this thing together. Okay. So uh, I just want to throw that out at you and let you see that as well. I will put all these things in the description box. I sent a bunch of you uh, links last night. But I'm telling you, they're making peace. They're making peace. And Yeshua said there's no peace but in him. And they said, uh, he also said in scripture, when they talk peace and safety, great destruction will come. Great destruction will come. So I'm going to go now. Uh, and uh, this Father, be with the people watching today. Oh, my goodness. We see all these things coming before us, Father. We know that your word is true and everlasting and everlasting. We ask that your Holy Spirit come and touch everybody watching today. Help people to wake out of sleep, Yeshua. Help them not to be uh, uh, sleep. Uh, Help them not to be drunken with wine and alcohol and doping and smoking. Help them to be sober, Father. Help them to give their life to you, Yeshua, today. Because we are about to face something we never faced in history, Yeshua. I ask that your Holy Spirit come and be with every name, every mama, and every boy, every girl in the prayer box today. We lift them up to you, Father, along with Miss Davis and the people in the uh, military. I mean, over in the military. Mission field. Mission fields right now. Uh, uh, my friend Leonard over in Victoria and all the other missionaries and the people in prison. Uh, we got all kind of people in prison. Uh, we have Michael in prison. We have uh, Jim Staley in prison who need to have prayers over them right now, Father. So we just know that we need your help right now to keep us strong before you, Father. We do not want to fall. You said to pray, Father. You said to pray and not faint. So Father, help us to pray and not faint. 
and looking on the things coming on the earth. You said to pray that we can be uh, uh, able to escape, Father, worthy to escape these things coming. So we ask that you help us to be strong in these evil days, Father. So we just thank you so much for your love for us in every way. Thank you for being our Savior. Uh, we bind Satan and all his evil angels below, beyond, beneath, mentioned and unmentioned, known and unknown. We bind all evil spirits on assignment against us in every way, Father. We thank you so much for this day. We thank you for Shabbat. And we just love you so much for your love and care for us, Father. We love you so very much. We love you so very much. You are our Savior. And we love you so much, Father. Help people to see, Father. Help people to open their eyes and their ears to see what's coming. Help them to know that there's no way out but through you, Yeshua. You're the only one can give true peace, Father. Help them to see it, Father. We ask all these blessings in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen and amen. So people, you go away and um, and really have a, a wonderful Shabbat. Uh, Shabbat Shalom. And I'll see you tomorrow on another video if possible. But I'm trying to do many as I can because I don't know how when it's going to be the last one. But anyway, you shall sanctify yourself and be holy for I am holy. Uh, that's why I told you the, the laws of Yeshua sanctifies us. So we need to follow his commandments and keep his uh, His His holiness. Uh, keep away from sin. Stop sinning. Once saved, always saved. It's not going to help you. You need to repent and be born again and know that he's the only one can save us. So you have a wonderful Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Love you so much. Say Shabbat Shalom, babe. Shabbat Shalom. Okay. Well, Shabbat Shalom. We love you guys. Bye-bye. Talk to you later on another video. Bye-bye.